Hello, I'm David Kerr and you're watching Shalom World News. Here's your latest news headlines from around the globe. The Archbishop of San Francisco says the campaign to end racism in the United States has, quote, been hijacked by some into a movement of violence, looting and vandalism. Archbishop Salvatore Cordleone spoke out after a group of anti-racism activists toppled a statue of the 18th century Franciscan missionary St Junipero Serra in the city's Golden Gate Park last Friday. Some critics of the saint, who was canonised by Pope Francis five years ago, say he symbolises European colonialism and was guilty of imposing forced labour upon Native Americans. Archbishop Cordleone, though, strongly rejects those claims and instead asserts that St Junipero Serra was one among hundreds of Franciscans who were exemplary in serving the poor and giving the downtrodden their rightful dignity as children of God. He also recalled how St Junipero made heroic sacrifices to protect the indigenous people of California from their Spanish conquerors, including walking all the way to Mexico City and back to petition the Spanish Viceroy for their legal safety. Archbishop Cordleone concluded his comments by advocating that love rather than rage provides a way forward for all the people of America. The United Kingdom Society for the Protection of Unborn Children has described the decision by the British Parliament to impose liberal abortion laws upon Northern Ireland as a gross abuse of power. The new laws were introduced by the United Kingdom Parliament in London last July due to the absence of a functioning devolved Northern Irish Assembly. It was suspended at the time due to the inability of the province's political parties to form a functioning government. Last week saw the London Parliament ratify those new abortion laws. That's despite the Northern Irish Assembly, which is now back up and running, voting against them earlier this month. Under the new laws, abortion in Northern Ireland is now legal in all circumstances in the first 12 weeks of pregnancy and up to the day of birth in the case of fetal abnormality. Liam Gibson of the Society for the Protection of Unborn Children in Northern Ireland described the new laws as the most barbaric abortion regime in Europe and stated that by imposing them, the UK government had shown its complete contempt for the people of Northern Ireland. He also promised that the campaign to repeal the laws would continue. The Pontifical Charity Aid to the Church in Need has expressed concern at the plight of a Pakistani Christian whose appeal against a 2010 conviction for blasphemy has now been postponed 70 times, meaning that he has spent a decade in prison awaiting an appeal hearing. Imran Ghafoor Massey was found guilty of burning books containing verses from the Quran at his family bookshop in the city of Faisalabad in July 2009. It's a charge he has always denied. Despite that, he was sentenced to life imprisonment in January 2010. His lawyer has now given an interview to Aid to the Church in Need, during which he expressed his frustration over the continual delay of Mr Massey's appeal hearing. Khalil Tahir Sadhu explained that his client's case has now passed through the hands of at least 10 justices over the past 10 years. Only once has the case ever made it to court. That was in 2015, when no decision was reached. He also explained that the next hearing date, which may or may not happen, has been set for July the 6th at Lahore High Court. Pope Francis has declared an Italian religious sister killed by three teenage girls in a satanic ritual was a martyr for the Catholic faith, thus paving the way for her beatification. 60-year-old sister Maria Laura Minetti was stabbed to death in a park in the town of Chiavenna in the northern region of Lombardy back in June 2000. Her three assailants repeatedly stabbed Sister Maria, who, it is said, prayed for her killers throughout the fatal attack. In fact, her last words, according to some accounts of her death, were, Lord, forgive them. The three girls were subsequently imprisoned for their crimes. On Friday, Pope Francis also approved miracles attributed to the causes of three others who can now be beatified. They are the 19th century Argentinian bishop, Mamerto Escu, the late 19th, early 20th century German Father Francis Mary of the Cross Jordan, who founded the Society of the Divine Saviour, and a Venezuelan Lebanon doctor from the same time period, Jose Gregario Hernandez Cisneros. A group of lay Catholics in Hong Kong have created an online petition expressing concern at the Chinese government's proposed new security law for the former British colony, which is now a semi-autonomous region of China. 
The Chinese National People's Congress is expected to pass the law in coming weeks. The online statement of Catholic laity against the enactment of Hong Kong national security law is worried that the new rules could destroy religious liberty within Hong Kong, including making it very difficult for the church there to maintain links with the Holy See. The full details of the new law are yet to be revealed by the Chinese government. So far, the online petition has garnered over 350 signatories. Finally, Pope Francis has bestowed three new titles upon the Blessed Virgin Mary. They are in English, Mother of Mercy, Mother of Hope, and Comfort of Migrants. The three new titles will be inserted into the traditional Litany of Loreto, which lists the many titles of Our Lady. The litany is often prayed at the conclusion of the Holy Rosary. Announcing the Pope's decision, the Prefect for the Congregation for Divine Worship, Cardinal Robert Sarah, explained that the titles of Mary are a privileged and sure way to encounter her son, Jesus Christ. The Litany of Loreto is believed to have originated in the 16th century at the Marian Shrine of Our Lady of Loreto in Italy. It was officially approved by Pope Sixtus V in 1587. More recently, Pope St. John Paul II added two new titles into the litany during his long pontificate. Well, that's all for now. Do join me next time in Shalom World News for some more headlines from around the globe. Until then, may God bless you. Shalom.